The Technique Series is brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching. Did you know that you can get a 100% free form check from one of our expert strength coaches? Seriously, absolutely 100% free. No credit card needed, no questions asked. Just go to barbelllogic.com slash technique and sign up for the free Barbell Logic experience now. Do that right now and then enjoy the show. Welcome to Barbell Logic Rewind. This is the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm Scott Hambrick. That's Matt. We've got a YouTube channel that we've been working very diligently on, and we think it'll be helpful to you. Yeah. We're uh, in the beautiful studios here at the Barbell Logic Studios in Springfield, Missouri. Go to youtube.com and look us up. We're in the Barbell Logic channel there and subscribe. And we also, barbell-logic.com, yep. go there and sign up for the Friday Fives. We've got an email newsletter that goes out all kinds of freemium content. It doesn't cost you anything but an email. Nothing. Yeah, and we send special deals out. We give discounts to online coaching and online great books and T-shirts and retail stuff. And there's uh, lots of great content that only the subscribers of the newsletter gets. Cool stories like history of weightlifting stories, and they feature... Uh, coaches and we we brag about clients prs and and there's always a really cool feature story carl shoot just wrote one on uh where he compared me to aristotle I which i mean obviously i'm so angry i mean i know most people when they meet me they're like god that guy reminds me of aristotle and uh so, so it's, it's actually as uh, much as of a narcissist and egomaniac as i am that was probably the most embarrassing article that's ever been written about I don't know. It's, it I'll feels work, pretty I'll, weird. I'll work on top of that. Yeah, you probably could. Hey. You know the stories. So go to YouTube and uh, subscribe to our podcast there. We'll be putting out more and more content there, and we will make it worth your while, I promise. Uh, click on the little bell in the top right corner and uh, ask for notifications so you get uh, notified when we push a new video up. We'll be up in the schedule. Yep. We need to do a quick episode on barbell and gym safety. Yeah, uh, definitely. <sighs> What do you think? I don't want to do this one, uh, but it needs to be done, <laughs> yeah. right? Well, I mean, this is no fun. No, it's especially fun. I need to tell a story, I think, at the beginning <clears throat> of this. It's going to, I mean, I just I just assume at this point I get choked up at least one time every yeah. podcast. So uh, in July of 14, I had a little cousin, 23-year-old cousin, Kenny Reynolds, who was uh, working out late at night, 930, 10 o'clock at night at uh, at his place of work. So he worked at a large corporation, which I right. certainly won't name. And they had an employee gym and uh, probably didn't even have barbells. He was actually on the Smith machine. Yeah. He was bench pressing at 175 pounds on the bar, bench pressing, no spotters, totally empty gym. You know, people are working the night shift. And uh, somehow he lowered 175 pounds down and uh, couldn't get it back up. And don't know if he passed out or, you know, I know that if... So this uh, had to be on his neck, right? It was on his neck, yeah. yeah. So, you know, your kind of natural inclination yeah. is to is to hold that bar at lockout at your neck. And then, of course, on that Smith machine, it comes straight down. So it didn't come down over his chest. And I don't know if he passed out or it was just too heavy. And then he was in a bad position where his elbows were way in front of his wrist or what it was. But he couldn't get the thing locked back in. And um, the barbell sat on his neck for uh, 17 minutes. And the security guard walked by. 17 minutes later and uh, my, my little cousin was brain dead and um, and so you know they took him to the hospital for a couple of days and did the best they could to keep him alive he wasn't he wasn't uh, hadn't passed yet and uh, you know cooled him off and put him in a coma and tried to get brain function back and, and they couldn't get it back and then take him off life support and so you know my family um, especially his his parents and he had uh, he has five brothers and sisters some of whom I'm super close to and as, as close to some of them as, as like my own brothers and sisters and we're obviously asking me a lot of questions like, how does this happen? And man, you know, what do I do? I, I, you know, I don't know how to answer this and I don't exactly know what happened. And of course, the the corporation certainly wasn't going to turn over the security tapes to us right. uh, without being made to do so. And so um, you need to write an article about barbell safety, you know, and try to save some lives and help people to do this in a, in a safer manner. And so barbells, barbells can be dangerous if used improperly, like a firearm. They should be respected uh, the same way that you should respect a firearm. Uh, but if you follow the rules of safety, just like if you follow the four rules of firearm safety, nobody gets killed. And not only is nobody killed in barbell safety, it's 
in barbell training, it's really, really rare to even get hurt. Yeah, nobody even gets injured. Yep. Uh, all you have to do is follow just a handful of rules. And uh, so so I, I just like to go through the major lifts and talk about how we perform those lifts correctly, safely, both if you have a training partner spotter slash spotter, um, and if you don't. Man, let's do this as quick as we can because nobody wants to hear this. They need to hear it. But they they got to listen. So, so we'll, yeah, let's, we'll do it let's quick. start with the easy one, the deadlift. Okay. No spotters. No spotters. I bet you're more likely to get hurt if you have a spotter. Oh, for sure. Than if you don't. You have to, especially the spotter's more likely to get hurt for sure. Yeah, I think uh, so. Barbell's on the ground. Oh, and by the way, this would go for the snatch and the power clean as well. Yeah, only you just, just get the hell away you would from just get people. more hurt with a <laughs> right, you know, you get more hurt with a snatch. Uh, you know, uh, a deadlift doesn't get dropped on anybody's head. Right. A snatch theoretically could. Um, it, it is really rare to drop weight on yourself. Right. Um, it is not rare to drop weight on someone else. I could see somebody crowding the platform and you got locking your deadlift out and then just dropping it on that other dude's Yeah, foot. sure. But, right. but, but it's going to be silly stuff like that, right? That's right. That's so right. stay away from the deadlifter. I think that, you know, other than somebody getting their shin scuffed up from a nasty knurling on the bar, it's pretty safe. People do yep. get dizzy. I have passed out after putting down a heavy deadlift. Yeah, but the weight wasn't in your hands anymore. Oh, I... I after putting it down, you're right. It was in my hands. Down, That's when it always let happens. Go, and then it gets woozy, right? Yep. Yeah, there's times you have to go down on your hands and knees and try to... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, your platform should be clear, man. Don't yep. put your change weights. Don't put tens on the... You know, yep. you pull tens off. You're training with the training partner. You pull some weight off and you just lay them on the platform next nope. to... That's a real bad idea. Um, you know, those dodecahedron plates are bad ideas. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in general, we don't, there's no way to safely spot a deadlift. The uh, one last word about the deadlift. Um, people do get dizzy when they put the deadlift down. It's my working theory that it's because their blood pressure is very, very high sure. and they unload too quickly yep. and their blood pressure goes to zero and Absolutely. They, they fall out. If you're getting dizzy, I think it's because you set the darn thing down too heavy. Like if you, if you've got a heavy in your hand and you just open your hands, right. man, you might you're get in trouble. Dead. So Set it down a little slower sure. if you're getting dizzy. Release and that, the that, pressure a little bit as you that'll go. That'll probably fix it. And then blow your air out slow at the bottom. Yeah. yeah but, that's probably a good idea. Uh, yeah, so those are the easy ones. That's the easy stuff, yeah. right? Next easiest. Press. The press. Yep. So let's talk about press. So first, let's talk about a full range press. Mm -hmm. So uh, really, the, the press is actually similar to the deadlift in that it's been it's very rare that I've ever seen anybody drop a press on their head. Super rare. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody drop one on their head. Yeah. So you have a couple options. Uh, option one is if you press with bumper plates, with, with rubber plates, uh, and really if you've got a decent platform and you don't press with bumper plates, just fine. press with iron, and you press outside the rack, if something bad happens, you can, you can kind of control the bar and throw it to the floor without chucking it, yeah. and it doesn't land on your head. And you really don't have to teach people that because it's our natural instinct to not let weight they land They can't get head. it over their head anyway. They can't get over their midfoot. Yeah, right, throw it right, out. right. They get it to their <laughs> forehead, and then it comes down. Um, certainly, if you have a tall enough squat rack, like a mm -hmm. collegiate-type squat uh, when Rachel and I lift in our rogue rack, I can't press inside the rack, just barely, but she can. And, so, and we've got one of those real deep rogue racks, like four feet deep. And so she'll press inside the rack. I'll press outside the rack. No problem there at all. And so, again, of all of the lifts that you spot, the chances of getting hurt spotting the press is probably higher than anything else. You don't so out of press because weight is overhead. No. What are you going to do? So if somebody presses, so, you know, I've pressed 300 before and you press around 200 pounds. It, it really. 210. Thank okay. You. <laughs> so, okay. So let's even say you're pressing 210 yeah. and I'm spotting. Can I catch the 210 if you no. throw it on me? No. Nope. No, even though I can press. So it's, it's just, you, you don't, you don't, uh, yeah, it's a bad idea inside the rack. I like to put the, on pressing inside the rack, you just put the pins, you can put the catch pins just below your shoulders so that you can put the bar on the shoulders. If you need to, that's not a problem at all. And you know, we see people get lightheaded on a press too sometimes. Yeah. It doesn't come on like a lightning strike. No, you know, you, you feel you it. Get a little tunnel vision, you know, it's coming and yeah. you almost always have time to, to actually rack it safely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And when does it normally, have you seen it? So I've noticed with one of the press movements that it does it more often than others. Yeah. The, well, the press lockout. Yeah. The lockouts. It, it happens. And, and when, it, and if it happens with a regular press, it's, Two inches below lockout. Correct. It it's happens. at the same spot. Yeah, but the press lockout is the one that is going to cause someone to black out more than anything. But you're already on the safety arms. You're it's already not on the that big That's a deal. right. There's no way to really get hurt on a press lockout because if if you actually 
passed out in like a one second, boom, you passed out and drop the weight. It's going to fall three it's gonna, inches. It's going to just drop on the, yeah. on the bars. You may hit the ground a little bit hard. You may bump your head, but but I've never really seen that either. It's not a, people don't pass out instantly. They kind of buckle and catch themselves. They yeah. don't really just, just have a blackout event and hit their yeah. head. Yeah, yeah those, aren't that, those aren't that big a deal. No, uh, so let's, let's do squat. The squat. Because that's that's actually the one that requires probably, while not as dangerous to the lifter as a bench press, which we'll, we'll end with, it's the one that requires probably the most skill as a spotter. You bet. Is that fair? It's actually useful to spot. It's useful the other to ones spot. You can't. That's right. Yeah. So the first lift that we have that's useful to spot is the squat. So let's start with, there's really no safe way for one person to spot the squat. Nope. Nope. So if you have a single training partner for the squat, you should really just pretend you don't have a training partner and squat inside the rack. And we'll talk about how to do that here in a second. But if you have more than one person. Well, let's talk a little bit more. If you have one, one tra- the reason, reason why one person can't really spot the squat is because there's no way to get hold of that bar and help the guy and keep a, a, a vertical bar path. When somebody fails in the squat, 90% of the time it's because it's forward to their midfoot anyway. Yep. And then this guy's like hunching your like thoracic spine and then yep. like pushes the bar forward more and you both die. Yep. You, you just can't do it. Two guys... You can spot. Yeah. So the other problem with one guy is, is that you really have to maintain contact with your lifter at all times Mm -hmm. to try to spot him. So, you know, if look, (laughs) if there was a, if I was, if I was in a gym and some guy was squatting 700 pounds in a real shady rack, which he shouldn't do. And he asked me, would you, will you spot me? I probably would. Just because you want to be the big spoon. It doesn't want to be the spoon. Yeah, yeah I hate that. that yeah, that I hate light. it. But like, what are you going to do? You know, so you, you, end, up, say, you put, end up putting your arms you up underneath their armpits and then you don't know if you helped them. They don't know if you helped. Again, I mean, you get touched by a spotter. The rep belongs to the spotter, not to right. the lifter. So it's a bad idea. You now, if, you're at, if you're at a place that's got a shady rack, it's made out of old oil field equipment and it's, yeah. it's like, hey, we don't need to squat that today. No. Yeah. That's, we need to I, go to a different gym. So, yeah, so two spotters. Yeah. we And we spot the plates, not the bar, right? Yeah, we, well, I spot the plates and the bar. Well, yeah, I like that better. So yeah. if I spot, what, what you'll see most people doing when they spot, the, for those of you guys watching the YouTube channel, a lot of, a lot of people will, will interlock their fingers and put it underneath the barbell. And uh, you can catch it pretty well there. I've actually, it's, you can catch it fine. Yeah, uh, maybe. Maybe but, not. You maybe know? not. I, you know, I don't see a lot of people miss. And it's heading sure. south, maybe not. The problem is, is that my job as a spotter is to get, if things, first off, if you're a spotter, you don't touch the bar or the plates unless something goes horribly wrong. Right. You don't help them get it back in the rack ever because you're on one side of the bar. Right. Now, if you're a coach and they lift and they stand up and it's really, really heavy and you put your hand on their upper back after they've locked out their squat and guide them back into the rack, that's fine. No right. problem with that. But a side spotter. So two guys would spot on. There would be a guy spotting on each side. My job is if something goes bad is to get the barbell back into the J-hooks. Only if I'm standing there directly beside the barbell with interlocked fingers and underneath the barbell, and I catch the barbell, it goes bad. I can't see the J-hooks because the plates are in the way. No, and you can't get it high enough either. Yeah, if the guy's hard. tall, exactly right. you can't get it high enough. So instead, if I step forward, if I'm on the lifter's left, I would use my left arm as the primary yep. spotting arm so that I could catch the bar in the crook of my elbow and grab the plates with my hands. And then as I start to help put it back in, I can see the J hook. So I'm in slightly in front of the, the barbell. Well, you're slightly behind the lifter. Correct. You're slightly behind the lifter. That's bar exactly is in right. the crook of your arm. You get hold of the plates and you help yep. guide it back in. And so the spotter on the left side uses his left arm as the primary spotting arm. And the spotter on the right side of the lifter would use his right arm. We'll shoot a three-minute video on that. Yeah, super easy. And you grab the bar and you get it back in. And you don't make sure you don't lift it up real fast because right. if you lift your side up fast, the other side goes down. You've got to work with your spotter and you've got to be – it requires some technique. If people haven't spotted before, I teach my lifters how to spot at the – like the last warm-up. Because I don't want to struggle at all with, I don't want to put any, I'm, we're going to figure this out while it's light enough and nobody's right. going to miss, right? We're going to get the timing figured out. So when, if do, you, when do they spot? Only when they miss. Mm, 
what so do you what is how do you how do you know the lifters missed right so he gets down the bar there, goes down it, the bar goes down it started to come back up and then it went down again correct so we, if it's slow we don't spot if it stops we don't spot it's only when it's heading care. south again yeah that's right and sometimes people will say if it you know if it moves any direction other than up I don't actually don't yeah. agree with that. You know, like yeah, I would never lots, get my own. That's rep right. Ever. You float every bar forward <laughs> four inches north, of, you know, forward of your midfoot. So, you know, that's another thing that requires some experience. I've had to yell many times as a coach at other spotters take it. who are starting to take it now more oh. often or not. They'll take it on their own. But well, don't, 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 don't. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Right. And so. Nothing will make you more pissed off than, you know, if you're doing a <laughs> max set of five or, some, you know, a three sets of five or a one rep max or a three rep max, some sort of max PR attempt. And on the last rep, you just grind the hell out of the thing. Yep. And the spotters take it halfway up my and they lo- steal it. My loving wife, uh, a couple meets ago, yeah. had a PR. She had it. Like, yeah, I've watched her it. do enough reps that I know she had it. It was slow. Yeah. It was really slow. But she was the first Really the first heavy squat of the day. The first slow, the first one that really slowed down. Yeah. And yeah, and she was first heavy one. It was, she was, it was the first th- north of 300 yeah. of the day. Sure. And the spotters took it from her, and she had it, and she will never forgive them. No. <laughs> never forgive them. She wasn't happy. So if you don't have a spotter, which a lot of you don't, you lived yep. in a squat rack, that's why you buy a rack. And what you do is on your warm-ups, what I do is I would video myself from the side and with the empty bar it's and the first kind of be oblique. That's right. You have to video yourself oblique and make sure that when you are just below parallel in a squat, that the catch pins end up another two or three inches below that. Like one or two holes lower than that. One or two holes lower than that depends on the hole spacing of your yep. of your squat rack. And you put the catch pins in there and you get those set when the weight is light. And you figure out what hole that is and you either mark it on the rack or if it's numbered, write the number down in your book and that's your hole forever. Yeah, that's right. It works really, really well. Um, White out, the white out, you know, brush or white nail polish or a Sharpie, Sharpie like a silver silver Sharpie or something works great there. So yeah, you mark those and and that's where you set it. And so then you go down and then you learn like it's, it's actually, it would be awesome if people never missed reps. Right. And as a matter of fact, you shouldn't miss reps very often, especially squat reps. But sometimes something happens, especially for intermediate, early intermediate lifters, yep. as they start to go through really heavy stuff and they haven't, they haven't had to grind. And also they're kind of a, the first time they're doing sets with reps less than five. Right. So in threes and twos and singles, they get down and they misgroove something. Sometimes it's not even a strength issue. They just misgroove it a little bit and it's not coming back up. They have to know how to bail, quote unquote bail. Yeah, we don't actually bail. No, you never throw I, the bar. You I just... say, I say, think of taking a knee. That's right. Because most of the time, when you miss, the bar is forward of your midfoot anyway. So you just got to go ahead and lean forward a little bit and just and, set it on the bar. And squat down, down a little bit more. Yep. You set you it on the down, If you typically squat an inch below parallel, if you'll squat two inches below parallel and lean forward a little bit, you the bar it. It, the, they'll take it nice. Won't make lots of noise. Everything will no, be smooth. No, nobody will even know. No one will even know. That's exactly right. And then, uh, you know, if you set, if you if you bail it off your back, the bar is going to fall a lot farther. Four feet. Your knee angle is going to close up more too. You're going to bend the bar. Yep. Right. And you might throw it on your sacrum, which I've seen happen yeah. several times. Somebody throws it off their back, and it doesn't miss their ass, and they throw it up on you know they hit their lumbar spine, which is not that's a real bad problem. The rule at a meet is, is if you bail on a squat, you're out of the meet. Yeah. Now, here's what I've seen. And I've been to tons of meets. I've seen lots of people bail. Yep. And rarely is a meet director ballsy enough to throw somebody out of a meet. <laughs> they threw one out of nationals. They throw people out all the time. And so yep. the very first, that may not be true. Yeah. Maybe may in the first one, the very first strength lifting meet. So I think that's when I was lifting. Yeah, it was, I was lifting at it. There was a kid that was, gosh, it was a big old, you know, big old thick kid. He probably weighed 320 pounds. And he was like a high school kid, 17, right. 18 years old. And he got to his second squat and, and he got down on the bottom, started coming back up, missed it and just bailed. Escort him from get, the building. That's right. So get him out. <laughs> and he was crying and just somebody came up to me and said, Hey, you know, he's a, he really likes you and he looks up to you. Could you say something to him? And I try to go encourage him. I mean, he's a kid, you right. know, but it happens. Got to have a standard. Right. And so it is what it is. So that's the squat. So if you squat by yourself, you always squat in the rack. You always squat with safeties. You make sure the safeties are slightly below, below parallel. And uh, and if you have one spotter, don't have them do anything. Have them coach. Yep. And if you have two spotters, they can side spot. Works fine. 
I love I love two spotters. If you miss one, you don't have to uh, you don't have to unload the bar. <laughs> you know, you two just, spotters you, is nice too for me when I lift heavy, especially if I have competent spotters because I don't have to worry about it. Right. So even if I'm in a rack, I know how to bail on weight. You know, I, mean? I, I miss a squat about once a year, once let, or twice a year. Let's stop saying bail. That reinforces all. Okay, the I'm back. sorry. Let's you're say, right. Let's say uh, miss. If I just miss an miss, attempt, right, or set it down, you have and to I set have it to down. set it on the pins. You know, it's not that big of a deal. I've done it before. I just don't like thinking about it. Right. And if I have competent spotters, two of them, then I don't have to worry. I say, man, I, I can push with everything I've got. And if something goes bad, they're going to save my ass. And that's nice. And actually, if I have competent spotters, I will not squat inside the rack. I squat outside the right. rack. Yeah. You know, if you spot for a guy that's squat real heavy like you do, or well, even me at this point, it's not super sure. heavy, but somebody that's experienced, they almost always will say, take it. Yeah, like, right. So you don't have to think. Yeah. You're just out there. You're just there to yeah. help. Because you don't bail. Yep. So you know. and you're, you're not, You don't go from like having control to no control. Right. With, with the exception of that I'm always worried that I'm going to like blow my acetabulum out. And that'll be the one time that I won't be able to say Your take chalky it. chalky hips. Yeah, that's right. My, my brittle, pink, like just, yeah, they're they're like potato chips. And my pelvis is just like a bag of potato chips just crushing any time. Yeah. I hope you're enjoying this episode in the technique series of the Barbell Logic podcast. You know, at Barbell Logic, we believe that barbell-based strength training is literally for everyone, and that the only thing holding most people back from all the incredible benefits that come from it is good technique and consistency, and we can help with that too. And whether you're just getting started or you've been lifting for a while, it's difficult to know if you're performing the lifts correctly or if there's anything you can do to make your lifting better. We have tons of free resources online from basic how-to videos that'll get you lifting safely and efficiently right away to podcasts, articles, and videos that will help you troubleshoot common errors. All you have to do is visit barbelllogic.com slash technique to see our best technique-focused content in one place. And while you're at it, you can sign up for a consultation with a Barbell Logic coach. This is a free form check and a chance to ask an expert all your training-related questions. There's no reason you should be struggling to get started or to make progress. Check out barbelllogic.com slash technique for more information and sign up for the Barbell Logic experience. Again, it's 100% free. There's nothing better for your training than knowing you're lifting safely, training efficiently, and on the right track. All right, let's get back to the show. So that's the squat. Last one. Bench press. The guillotine. Yeah, the one that could kill you, right? This is the only lift that we do where we are actively moving weight over your face. Yeah, and your airway. Oh. Um, you know, I got another story, real quick story to tell. That We had a kid at our high school that I used to teach at. I used to run, I, you know, ran the weight program, and I would run before and after school weights. But there was a weight lifting class during the during the day. And they had I think like I've six, heard this one. Six of those. So I didn't teach the weight lifting. That kind of stuff is reserved for, like, the uh, the football coach. And so last hour of the day, basketball coach was in the gym. And they were all lifting. They were bench pressing. And a kid had, I think he just had like 155 on the bar. But he was an all-state baseball player. Really good baseball player. Little guy. Like, you know, 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, hmm. I don't know, 150, 160 pounds. Had 155 on the bar, which is not a, not a max for him. And uh, he asked a guy to spot him. And the guy, rather than walking uh, kind of between the weights on the weight storage of the rack went underneath the bar from the bench and the kid was already laying on the bench and the spotter went underneath the bar and rose up too early and unhooked it and unhooked it and bumped the bar and it free fell 155 pounds directly across this kid's face, like just below his nose. This was in the fall and the kid had to take the rest of the year off school. It was done and that was his junior year of high school, and he came back his senior year and did not look like the same kid. I'm mad about it. He had so much plastic surgery on his face. If you'd meet him, you'd be like, ah, oh, it looks like a pretty normal-looking kid. And they did a really good job of plastic surgery. It just didn't look like the kid. Right. It changed, it changed his face. Right. And um, so, man, you got to be careful with that stuff. So the barbell moves over your face. Every year you get some kid that is benching in his basement and gets decently strong, gets up to like 250-pound bench press and brings the bar down and can't get it back up. Yep. And there was a story from a few years ago, we say a few years ago, it's been 10 years ago now. And the kid had, was one of those issues where he had, you know, 250 pounds, 260 pounds, not that much and brought it down and couldn't get it back up and rolled it down his belly, did the roll of shame, rolled it down his belly and rolled it onto his lap and finally got out from under it and, uh, you know, went and took a nap and woke up dead. Right. And, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, tore a bleeder, an internal bleeder and bled out 
internally from this thing. Yeah, you're rolling. It's a you know one inch bar with 250 pounds on it. Sure. You're squish all these soft tissues. And, yeah. It's nope. So bad deal. let's talk about the right way to do it. Well, so there's a couple ways to handle this. Number one is how do we lift? Well, one, we never move a bar as a lifter horizontally over our face without our elbows being locked. Right. So the first thing we do, you'll see people a lot of times they take the bar out of the J hook with bent elbows. No, we lock out our elbows while the bar is still over the J hooks and then move the bar horizontally over our shoulder joint, over our glenohumeral joint so that you know that you've got better control of the barbell. And then as you break at the elbows and start to lower the bar, the bar is over your chest, not over your face. Right. So that's number one as a lifter. That's really important. Same thing happens when you lock it out. It actually happens more often when they try to lock it out. You get somebody to start to struggle with a bench press, struggle, 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 struggle. And they try to throw it back in the J hook. Right. That's a terrible idea. Right. It's a good way to get killed. So as a lifter, we never move the bar horizontally over our face, either from the rack to the chest or from the chest to the rack without our elbows being locked. That's number one. Number two, you really should always have a spotter. There's really no reason to bench press without a spotter. It just requires one. And the spotter doesn't even have to lift off, although I like lift offs for my spotter. And the rule is just stay back there and save my ass if I die. Yep. If the spotter touches the bar at all, the rep belongs to the spotter. Don't touch the bar, right? Don't touch the bar. But if you don't have a spotter, your first option should be to not bench press. Your second option, which shouldn't be bench pressing, but if you bench press and you don't listen to what I'm saying, you never collar the bar. Never collar the bar. Yep. You never collar. In the bar. fact, I prefer not collaring the bar. Even with spotters. Space. I prefer, yeah, well, yeah, you never, ever collar the bar, even with spotters. That's right. I prefer not collaring. I prefer no safeties, actually, to uh, using safeties with the bench press. Okay, but no collars. But no collars. Yeah, so that you can bail. So if you don't have collars, think about it. If you, first off, they're often called the safety collars. Right. You know, unless you're bench pressing and you can't get the weight back off and then you can't get, you can't dump the weight. If you're spotting by, or if you're, you're benching by yourself and you lower the bar down and you can't get the weight off and there are no collars, you know, worst case scenario, you can just, you can just you're bend right. the barbell and let all the weight slide off the right side. And then all yep. the weights will slide off real fast on the left side. It'll make lots of noise. It'll crash. Everybody in the gym is going to look at you, but you don't end up dead. So if you, if you get, get it on your chest, you can't get it up. Or if you fail to lock out, put it back on your chest and you rock all the way to one side and let the plate slide off, yeah. rock back to the other side, let them slide off the other side, swallow your pride, get yeah. up and put it back in the rack. Now, I want to be clear. This is not the best option. No. The best option is a spotter. a spotter. And if you don't have a spotter, the second best option is to not bench press. We don't need to bench yeah. press that bad. But if you're going to bench press and you are, so we're going to talk about how to do it in as safe of a way, even though we've already recognized that you're not going to be that safe. And you collar it anyway? You can still rock it over and put half of those plates on the yeah, floor. Yeah, you probably could. That's probably you, the best option. And then you can but still get out from under definitely it. Definitely do not collar. And don't and, roll it down your, your across your guts. That's right. That's a terrible idea. Your last option on a bench press is to actually put the safety pins in the rack. Bench inside the rack. You know, we teach to have a, a fairly good arch, not a giant Russian power lifter arch, you know, where there's only two inches range of motion. We but, don't bridge. So we don't super bridge, but we we want a nice big high chest and we want to... We want to sort of pull our, our nipples as high as we can and get our chest up over our glenohumeral joint so we have less horizontal movement. And so you can set the pins essentially between, below where the, the top of your chest is, but above where your neck is. Right. So that if you get it down on your chest and you're in an arch, you could relax that arch and the bar would sit on the pins and not rest on your chest and never end up on your neck. So even a worst case scenario, you relax and it's still kind of on your chest. You, can you could kind of roll it up towards your neck. And by the time it gets to your neck, it's not on your neck. It's on the pins. And so, again, not a very clean way of doing it, but it will save your life and nobody dies. Yeah. So that's barbell safety. That's all you do, man. You uh, just what, be careful. One more bench press safety thing. Yeah. Uh, your spotter needs to do an alternate grip Ooh, that's when so they important. hand off. So the alternate grip, you have one hand supine, the other prone. And I'm, oops, one hand prone, the other supine. Yeah. And you reach off and you put it over the the, the lifter's uh, shoulder, shoulder joint, joint. And then you carefully open your hands at the same rate and yep. step back and get away. And get away and get out of their peripheral. If you if you have both hands overhand and you set that bar out there, when you let it go, you can impart a little rotation on the bar and spin it out of the guy's hands. Not only that, you don't have great leverage to it's pick true. up heavy weight. Yeah. But for me, the very first thing I watch 
is does the person know how to lift off on the bench press? Yeah. So you need to, you need to have a little talk. If you, if you say, Hey, can you spot me? Yep. You know, you're at the gym, you pick up some strangers, say, Hey, can you spot me? Have a little talk with them. Go over and show them how you want them to hold the bar and tell them I'll nod when I'm ready. You count to three and on three, we pick it up together. Right. And then you tend to just step back. Yeah. Then get out of the way. So I had that happen to me in, in Mexico. I was just down at, uh, the resort you told us to go to, Barcelo, down at Riviera Maya, and they had a really super they nice gym there. Barcelo. Barcelo. Sorry, Barcelo. Uh, and I was bench pressing, and that little trainer guy. You didn't speak good Spanish. That's so. right. I didn't speak good Spanish. And uh, and so I asked him to come spot me. I had 315 on the bar. I was trying to tell him, like, hey, I think I'm going to do seven or eight reps at 315. Uh, just spot me. Don't touch the bar. Just save me if I die. You know? He's like, okay, got it. And so he lifted off with one hand right in the middle of the barbell and then kept that hand clenched as hard as he could on the White barbell knuckles. the entire time, which means his knuckles touched my chest, not the barbell. I bench press 315 for 12. Right. Yeah, <laughs> short range of motion. And, he's and helping you. he helped me the whole time. So then I got that set done. And so then, that's a PR. <laughs> yeah, so, no, it's not quite, but it's a... So then I went and there was another guy that had been there every morning. It was like a maybe a 50-year-old American guy and pretty good size. And I walked over and said, hey, how are you at spotting bench press? And he said, good, no problem. I said, okay, listen, I just had the trainer spot me and he kept his hand on the bar the whole time. He said, oh, that's not okay. Right. I said, okay, here's what you're going to do. Over, under, I'm going to say, you, you can count to a three, you lift off on three and then get out of the way and only save me if I tear my pec. That's the deal, <laughs> right? And so he's like, got it. And then he got out of my way and then I benched it for eight. There you go. Which right. was, <laughs> right. was four, four reps less. <laughs> so, you know. What are you gonna do? General gym safety. Don't lean plates up. They nope. fall over. They fall over on Ooh, people's I got a good feet. One. What? I got a good one. I, I tell this all the time, and almost nobody. Oh, this is gonna be so good if you stuck around for this whole thing. <laughs> right. People put the weight plates on the wrong way. Iron plates on the wrong way. Okay. Right. Oh yeah. Forty-five and twenty-five pound plates, and theoretically all the plates, but I don't really care what you do with the little plates. It's not that big of a deal. But forty-five and twenty-five pound iron plates that have lips on them. Go on the bar facing in, yep. not facing out. And not, and not, don't worry, you know, the IPF and powerlifting meets, they face them all in and face the last one out. That's for photographs. We don't care about photographs. And they have spotters. For and everything. they don't have big lips on those plates either. Those, those, Correct. Those they're, the they're, yeah, they're, right. They're the steel. So for normal iron plates, heavy 45 and 25 pound plates face in. Why? Nobody ever knows. And by yeah. the way, I didn't know for a long time. Right. Yeah, you told me. Yeah. So, so here's why. If a lip faces in, for those of you guys on YouTube that can't watch, I can put eight fingers. I have I have all four fingers on my right hand and all four fingers on my left hand on the lip and my thumbs steadying the back, the flat end of the plate. Yep. So there's less chance to drop it on my toes. If it faces out, only my thumbs are on the lips. So I only have two fingers, two thumbs on the lip of the plate. Boy, I've seen a lot of people with weight facing out slide a 45 pound plate off and it slides off of their thumb and drops down. Right. My brother broke his, broke his toe doing that one day. Now the opposite is true on the weight tree on a weight tree. Right. They face out because I can actually position myself to go down and grab the plates with my fingers. If you face them all in, then I've actually got to kind of grab and wiggle it off of the next plate and you get a blood blister and you get a blood blister. And if you've used up the entire bar of the, tree there's nowhere for it to go so you'll start to pull it off and it'll fall down and fall on your foot as well so on a weight tree the plates face out and on a barbell the plates face in and if you have bumper plates it doesn't matter because they're all the same and you should have bumper plates and you should have bumper plates no yeah I, so. I, you know i think so i, I love iron plates i love the, i love the rattle you know i love it but you know if I got a gym and I have people that I don't know that come there. Sure. Man, the competition bumpers are Safe, safer. Safety, noise, me too. Like I lift in my house. And so I have bumpers because they're quieter, right? If I'm going to lift in early in the morning or train a client early in the morning, my family's upstairs sleeping. Like bumper plates are a lot quieter. You drop a bumper, 45 pound bumper on your foot, you might break a foot, but you won't break the skin. Yeah, you won't right. bleed. You know, the 45s. Yeah. So don't That's lean it. stuff up. They fall over. Yep. Uh, Carl Schutt, uh taught me this. He was uh, he was bench pressing heavy as he always does because he yeah he's good bench and uh, he unracked the bar by himself and he hadn't lubed up the sleeves the bushings yep. and the plates wouldn't spin and it spun it out of his hand oh wow it was it was uh, it was medium heavy I mean because he like lives in, in his garage and so yep it was the high two hundreds I think yeah. humidity got <laughs> in there and 
in a he, rusted it up a little bit and tightened up that sleeve. Yep. You know, I think he set it down and it, I think he was coming up and it yeah, wasn't I've very that, high and it spun it out of his hand. So make sure those bearings are and, and uh, bushings are turning and lubed in, yep. on the, in those uh, bars. It's a yeah. Big well, deal. that used to be a struggle. I can remember <clears throat> when I was in strongman, we would we would axle press a lot, and an axle is basically just a, a solid stiff barbell. There yeah. are no sleeves, and uh, it changes. You really get, you've got to get good at pushing that barbell straight up and not letting it bend at all. Not letting the, if the weights start to spin, you're in trouble. Right. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. That's how to be safe, man. That's a pretty good start. Yeah. So go to iTunes and subscribe. Email us if you have any questions. You can go to barbelllogicpodcast at gmail.com. We'll fix that eventually. Yeah. YouTube. And, yep. Subscribe on YouTube. Well, most of the stuff's on YouTube now. Looks better. Look how good looking we are right there. Uh, no. I don't know about that. You do but, look you do look like Jack Paint Hill. It's amazing. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye.